I just came back from an amazing tour in India where I spoke to thousands of students and also to a wonderful community of believers in Nagaland in the north of India. And you will later uh, see uh, or hear uh, one of the students speaking how it impacted not only his life, but I believe the life of many. This was a new message to them. And I'm so thankful for the support that you give me with your love, your prayers, and your support, uh, because that's what makes it possible for us to do these things. I'm going now to South Africa, later to Europe, and I need your prayers. And I hope you're going to look at this message that I preached, which I believe was one of my best messages to show that each time that you Jews come back, God has visited this earth. They came back from Egypt and God visited Sinai and gave us the revelation of the Old Testament and the Ten Commandments. They came back from Babylon and Jesus was born as a Savior in Bethlehem. And the New Testament was given to us Gentiles as a result of that second homecoming. Isn't it amazing? And it came out with such power and such an anointing and love of the Lord that we are the generation that see the Jews come back from all the countries where they were scattered, more than 80, and they're here already in Israel. And we're on the threshold to see this time that same Lord that visited already twice this planet Earth come this time not to Sinai, not to Bethlehem, but to his holy hill in Jerusalem, where he will stay with us for a millennium of peace and righteousness, when the nations will turn their swords into plowshares, where we will become again like in Noah's time, a thousand years, where a child will be a hundred years. This is going to happen as a result of what is happening now, the third homecoming of the Jewish people prophesied by the Bible in our time. What the devil hates, God loves. And in that way, I say you can learn from the devil. You can say, ah, thank you to make me alert. You're clever, but I'm more clever because I listen to the Lord. And now I'm going to tell you something that will shock you. If it is so important, what I have been preaching to you, the return of the Jews to their country for the Lord's kingdom to come to this earth, then we must see activity of the devil on this planet, earth, against that movement. If there is no enemy activity against the Jews coming home, it's just my words. But if it is so important to the salvation of India, if we stand with the Jewish people, not only the salvation of India, but the salvation of this planet Earth, as Paul says in Romans 11, if the rejection and the scattering of the Jews has come to you, Gentiles, to be reconciled to God, what shall the fullness of Israel be but life from the dead? In other words, it, it is going to be unbelievable. You got your contact with the God of Israel and the King of Israel, Jesus, your Savior, through their rejection. What will happen when they're gathered and come to the hour of their fullness, says Paul. So, if this is so important, we must see in history enormous devilish activity against it. It was like a revelation. God showed me. When they came back out of Egypt, God already knew what he was going to do. Reveal himself on Sinai. The Ten Commandments. The temple and God dwelling for the first time on earth since the fall in paradise. 
the Lord God coming down and living on this holy hill. In Psalm 132, he says, He and I have desired to dwell forever. Forever. That's why you feel Jerusalem is not like Rome. Rome has the Vatican. Jerusalem at the Lord. So the devil says, I am going to barricade this God against whom as a beautiful cherub, archangel Lucifer, I have rebelled against him. I was stunned against him. And he moved in Pharaoh. And it took 10 plagues to shake the Jews out of the hand of Pharaoh. He had the Jews murdered in the Nile. And the, the Jewish women had to hide not only their children, their babies, but to make their mouths go when they were weeping. And God took them out. And the Jews today still at Passover think of that night. And they sing. I've sat with the Jews. This night we think of God being more powerful than Pharaoh who wanted to slaughter us in the Nile. And God won. So it must have been important to God for the devil to be so active. Now if that's true, let's see if it is true for the second homecoming. The Jews came home and there was a man who only loved himself and in the pride of his position, Haman, he hated the Jew Mordecai. He was jealous of him. And the devil used, and he will use your jealousy, came on Haman, used his jealousy, and he went to Ashaverus, the king. He says, give me the promise. You're going to slaughter all the Jews. And Ashaverus says, you can do it. So you learn from the devil how important it is. And we Christians hardly know how important Israel is. Therefore, we don't pray for them. We don't fast for them. And we just wait for the rapture. And the devil loves it. Because we're not involved with the battle to bring the kingdom of the Lord. Let your kingdom come on earth. Let your will be done as it is. That's our prayer. But I put my life behind that prayer. I hope you too. So it took the fasting of all the nation of the Jews. Three days. Try it. I've tried it. Three days without water, without food. You feel so weak. And all the nations says, Lord, please, please. And God used the fasting and the prayer of the Jewish nation to cut short Haman with his murderous plan of genocide. And the Jews could escape. And your Jesus was born out of that fast of Esther. Are you willing to become a Zionist with the Lord Jesus because you love him to come back with his kingdom? Now we live in the most unbelievable time. This time, the Jews do not come just back from Egypt, not just from Babylon, but from America, from all the nations where they were scattered. So if it is so important, and I know the Lord Jesus listens to every word I say. I was preaching at the empty tomb not so long ago, and a woman came to me and said, Young Wilm, I saw Jesus stand beside you when you were preaching. Jesus hears my words, 
and agrees with them because he's the king, not of New Delhi. He's the king of the Jews. He died as the king of the Jews and he's the king of Israel. And he is your savior and your king. Amen. So if it is so important, the third time, more important than the first and the second, which were already so important, then we must see enemy activity of Satan. We find it in Pharaoh the first time, in Haman the second time, and the devil had Adolf Hitler the third time to prevent the return of the Jews. He came into this man, I've read the book, The Power of the Occult on the Young Man, Adolf Hitler. I was interested to find out what made Adolf Hitler, Adolf Hitler. And this man, a born again Christian, went to his youth friends and he said, Hitler loved the occult music of Wagner and he was filling up his spirit to think that he was going one day to be an enormous leader. And he says, I, to the author, he said, I saw Hitler one day after he had listened to the occult music of Wagner, he walked and walked in the mountain of Austria because he was an Austrian. And he was suddenly speaking to the wind. And the devil had his hand on him. And this friend said, I heard him say, I will one day be the savior of Germany. And in Braunschweig, they made him the, a German citizen. And the devil says, you must kill the Jews. That's why I've raised you up. Because I know when these Jews go back, my adversary who knocked me out on the cross is going to sit in Jerusalem. And put me out for a thousand years. Kill them. <sighs> what future India has. If you can get this message. Spread to every single Christian. If it is true that the Jewish people are the apple of his eye, that even in their rejection, God caused that rejection to make reconciliation between you and God, as Paul says. And they are coming home. While we in India and we in Europe are doing our Christian thing. And everything is important. You may have said two hours ago to your friend, shall we go to the lecture? I don't know. Is there a good uh, cricket match on the television? Uh, okay, let's go. That was a very important decision that you came here. The devil did not want you to hear this message that my mate might save India to become the most prosperous, blessed nation in the end time. If we give Israel the place in our heart and in our nation that it has in God's heart. Um, I'm uh, very touched really and I'm coming from Abu Dhabi. And um, really, we have not heard any messages like this. You know, this is so touching and something very different. And it was an eye-opener for me. I mean, um, because I, I, I just, uh, maybe uh, it's been three, four months back, I started reading the Bible from the beginning. So I came to know so much about Israel, but never my mind was, what do you say, that I never thought Israel was so important. And I never considered that place. And... And now really it's been, uh, I'm, and yesterday it's been two, three days that I've been praying for Israel and I've also told, my dad's also a pastor in Abu Dhabi. So I told him also, and uh, he was also explaining to me about the, 
importance of Israel and uh, and really I and 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 I was praying and I told him also tell the people in the church to pray for Israel and uh, really Israel is facing a lot of trouble and it's uh, the apple of God's eye so it's very important that we all pray for Israel and I know many of your dads and many of your people I mean relatives might be pastors so please tell them also let's you know be a channel for God like he said you know God is going to use many people in this place to you know stand for Israel and God's people so I encourage you tonight to you know spread you know tell your relatives or your pastors to pray for Israel or and you also must pray diligently for Israel and uh, let's be a great channel to God amen Amen. Are you willing to stand for the purposes of God in this, your generation? Not only to believe in His promises, but to walk them out as His people did under the leadership of Joshua and Caleb in times gone by. Rather than just reading books and biblical verses about it, come with us in this film of highlights of the International Christian Zionist Feast of Tabernacles and see how one can be totally involved in the prophetic events concerning God's people Israel. As you see and experience this outburst of love, comfort and standing with God's people. It will encourage you to be with us and the people of Israel at the next Feast of Tabernacles. It is quite amazing when you read the amazing story that God has longed for for so many centuries to bring his people after having dispersed them in anger back in great favor to their land. How God, for instance, in Jeremiah, expresses himself when he says, I will plant you at that time, bringing you back from the four corners of the earth, in your land, with all my heart and with all my soul. And that against the background of so many Christians who have no heart and no soul for the very thing that their own God and Father, whom they trust through Jesus Christ to be their Father, is so full about. In case of another war, from that side, from the north, that God will protect Israel and especially its soldiers. Mitzafun tipatachet hara. From the north will break forth evil. It's the prophecy of Jeremiah. And so often they have been attacked from the north. So we are standing here not for nothing. And it's a wonderful place here to explain it because you can see everything concerning the past of Jerusalem and also some of the important points, geographic points that are important to Jerusalem's future. And with Jerusalem's future, the future of the world. Israel! Jerusalem! Jerusalem! Just as Israel had to possess God's promised land by way of going through the water, first through the Red Sea and then crossing the Jordan, we as believers likewise can only enter into God's salvation and His best by going through the waters of personal repentance and faith. So there at the Jordan, an opportunity was given for those who felt called to be baptized in the river at the beautiful site of Yardanit. People have lost their grandparents in the Auschwitz, lost their sons in the wars of Israel, or lost their parents in terrorist attacks. And what does the world do? Criticize, criticize, criticize. I says, when are we going to rise up as real brothers and say, Israel needs you. 
to come with a bleeding heart and say, I'll do anything for you. Mm.